Here at the Kingdom Church, it's about more than just Sunday mornings. We want to see you thrive and grow in the Kingdom of God. Grow from where you are and grow to where you're heading. Our growth groups meet throughout the year to ensure your success. It's where you prep for the game. It's where you um, are motivated, where you get feedback, where you're corrected, um, where you reset and recharge to go out for the game. Because as we know, iron sharpens iron. You meet people and you grow with them. And you seem to make this connection that would have never happened had you not been in a home church. There's a band of brothers, sisters, family that will connect you somewhere. In addition to meeting on Sunday mornings, we're also very active in our community. The heart of the church is definitely for people. Like, I want people to be able to feel like, man, they love people. Like, they don't love them perfectly, but they love people. Like, they want to see people do well. So, like, giving away cars, giving away down payments, we want that generosity to be like, man, they just, the, the love you feel there is an overwhelming love. We follow God, love people, and change the city. deliver me but even if you don't if I got to have this thorn in my side and it can bring you glory and it can bring encouragement to people to let them know that when you go through you can still preach when you go through you can still sing where you at worship leader well I ain't singing right now because listen I'm just going through that's the time you should worship the most that's the time when you should praise him the most. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him for what he's done. No matter what happens in your life, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath. When you go through, you can still preach. When you go through, you can still sing. So let's play, Mr. Ramsey. Okay. All right. Guys, you can play with us, too. Yeah. We want you to try to guess what emotion we're talking about. Yeah. So I'll go first, Mr. Ramsey. Okay. I'm going to make an emotion okay. because emotions make you cry sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys yell it out. Uh -huh. Ramsey, you have to guess. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Sleepy? Mm-mm. Uh, worried? Annoyed. Come on! Ah. Yeah! You guys see that? Yeah! Annoyed. I was okay. annoyed, look. Now you gotta figure it out. You ready? Okay, I'm excited. Right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You ready? Okay. I'm ready. Is it on the paper? <laughs> you okay. have to pay attention. Okay, to okay, go, go, go. <laughs> Confused? Yes, yes, yes. You look just. Yes. What? <laughs> Guys, look. Do it again, Mr. Ramsey. You look just like. <laughs> Ramsey, is the show?
Matthew chapter number two. I want to talk about the miracle in the manger. Just a little different twist from what you would anticipate. Matthew chapter number two. And I want to begin reading, if you don't mind, at verse number nine. The, you know, there is a, a piece where we say three wise men. There wasn't three. We say three because there are three gifts, but there were more magis than three. And after this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. And went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child and with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Gold, frankincense and myrrh. Three wise men gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. That's it. So what we have happening here is that Herod says, I want to kill every child, and, and, the, and he's using the magi, the wise men, to give them an indication on where this child is and and they're trying to find uh, this child that is being born and, and being classified as the Son of God and and as we are in this season of Advent the Lord's return I want to draw your attention not to be too long today is that Edder? I oh, good to see you Edder moved to Atlanta came back for Christmas all right um, I have ADD, y'all. You're gonna pray for me. Stay focused on what I'm supposed to do. The miracle in the manger is a sermon about Jesus and how God used a group of magi, some scholars believe, followed the star for five miles. Five miles. That's important because five is the number of what? Grace. God doesn't do things. Uh, everything God does in scripture is designed and is intentional. The, the magis walked five miles miles uh, to bring three significant gifts not just any gifts it's three significant gifts you can't ignore the fact that there were three gifts that were mentioned we've never seen in the Old Testament gold frankincense and myrrh used as a combination these details are significant to Matthew's narrative it gives us insight and highlights the gifts given in the manger these gifts speak to the deity, the destiny, and the death of our Savior. They speak to his deity, his destiny, and his death. We will focus on these, but also this Sunday we'll find a way to be like the Magi or the wise men and bring a gift significant. It has been said people are easily able to give expensive things to everything except their Christ. Now I want to give you a picture, I'm not sure if they had the ability to have it on the screen, this picture you know, of, of kind of what this inn was, but I'll, def I'll describe it for you for the sake of our understanding. Katulama is, is the name inn. They didn't have enough space for him in the manger, so they moved him in the Ketulamah, the end. So this is important, y'all, as much as you may not think it is, because I want you to not think about the manger as this little area with, with hay, and, and we kind of make it an American thing. Well, what, what they typically would have is, is they would have a home that had a, a, what we would call a guest house. They would have a guest house where, or, or guest room, and, and this inn is, is kind of where people would stay. And, and so because this inn had, had no, uh, th this inn probably was occupied by somebody else, a relative that came in or some family that came in or a journer that came in. When Jesus came and was, was being born by Mary and Joseph, th th they came to this inn, this particular spot, and, and they were told, listen, there, there's, there's no space upstairs for you. So we, we got a spot on the bottom 
where the animals are because, you know, in their culture, most people had animals in their basement. That's that kind of basement. They had animals in a basement. That's how they made their money. That's how they had stature. That's how they ate. And so they said, well, we, we don't got no room. They probably didn't say we don't got, but you understand. We don't got no room for you up here, but we do have room for you maybe in the bottom. You can go to the bottom of the of the basement and, and sit with the, with the sheep and, and all the other things things that are down there. Can you imagine something so expensive being placed in something insignificant? You've got to learn that sometimes in life, your value is not always determined by where you're placed. And Mary and Joseph, they're, they're poor. They don't have a lot of resources. And so, number one, God is the one that gave them this child. They weren't looking for a child. And this child was, was an immaculate conception, which means that no man was involved. Because if a man was involved, the man would have passed his sin nature through the Savior. So God needed to make sure that there was no man involved. So the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary, which is important because that is a foundational element of our faith, that uh, 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 this angel impregnated Mary and Mary became pregnant with child and, and pregnant with child. She was considered to be anywhere between 14 to 18 years old and she was poor and out of all the people Jesus could have put himself in, he doesn't put himself in a queen, he doesn't put himself in a rich person's body, he puts himself in the belly of a poor woman because great things come out of scarcity. What, what, who would most people deem insignificant? You mean to tell me out of all the people in the world, you're going to put your son in? You're going to put your son in Mary's womb? Come on, out of all the wombs you could rent, that's the womb you're going to rent? And it gives me and you hope that God would put his value, his treasure in this earthen, trashy vessel that some people would wonder, why is God using you, picking you? And you would say, I don't know, but he's been doing it throughout history. He's been picking abnormal people and doing extraordinary things with. And that is the story of what we see here. And now there are these wise men who are bringing three gifts. And it's interesting that they're bringing gifts to a baby who hasn't saved anyone. He hasn't done a miracle. He hasn't changed anybody's hearing. He hasn't changed anybody's eyesight. But all of a sudden, that these men recognize and are cognizant that this is the Messiah, even though he hasn't performed a thing. You know, it's not worship when you're giving to God because he's done for you. It's true, authentic worship when you're able to give to God and he hasn't matured anything in your life yet. And it seems like, why would y'all put all of your life at risk to worship a baby that hasn't done anything because it's a principle? Worship when it's pure. It doesn't matter what you do. It's because of who you are. You don't have to do a miracle to be worshipped. You don't have to get me a job to be worshipped. You don't have to to get me another opportunity to be worshipped. You just have to be who you are. That's why when people say, I'm going to praise the Lord because he woke me up this morning. That's a reason to praise him. I'm going to praise the Lord because he gave me breath in my body. That's a reason to give him praise. I'm going to praise the Lord because I got this gift. That's a reason to praise him. But worship is not about what I got. Worship is about who he is. I'm worshiping him not because he gave me anything, but because of who he is. And even though he's in an instant significant place my gift to him is significant so number one is they give him gold gold is important because it speaks to the deity of who he is they, they always gave gold to kings. It, it, it was always a symbolism that I'm going to give gold to a king. And, and they bring this gold to this king because they understand that you are a king. Can I tell you something? It's prophetic that, that they were giving him a gift that reflects who he's going to be, even though he's not that yet. Can I 
can I ask you a question? Maybe God has given people to you as a gift to point you to who you're supposed to be even though you're not there yet. You know, it's crazy. You'd be like, man, every time I go somewhere, someone tells me I'm great. And I'm like, man, I got, I got 18 kids, and I don't even know where the next money's going to come from. But I keep hearing everywhere I go, you're great. And I don't know why they keep telling me that. And everywhere I go, I could be turning up in the club, and I could be doing my own thing, and they'd be coming up to me saying, there's something in you. I see something in you. And everybody's texting you, and everybody's telling you that God got a plan for your life. And it's almost like God got your name on a radar because the reality is is God is always consistently trying to highlight who you are and not where you're located but who you are and most people define who you are by where you're located you may be in a manger but you're still a queen you may be in a manger but you're still a king you are not defined by the block that you were raised off of so here it is they give him gold because you cannot worship God and give him anything cheap. Because when we bring God something, it should cost us something. When we bring God something of value, it should cost us something. And that's the reality that many of us miss. We don't just give to a church, we give through a church. And God says, I want you to give this gold. And, and they could have kept the gold, but they said, no, I got to bring this gold to the master. But, 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 but not just that. Gold is meant to honor kings. But then they gave frankincense. Frankincense is an aromatic, clear resin obtained from trees. It's used in incense and perfume, and it was treasured aroma for healing property. Frankincense was also an ingredient used in the sanctuary in Exodus when God was creating the sanctuary. He said, I want my sanctuary to look this way and I also want it to smell this way. God is so detailed, he's not just detailed about how it looks, he's also detailed about how it smells. That I want it this dimension, I want it this angle, I want, I, God is an interior designer and if you feel like God has called you to interior design, I don't want you to minimize your gift and say, oh, all I do is just design things. No, you got a gift that God had from the Old Testament. God was precise about how he wanted things designed. And some of you minimize the gifts that God gives you because it's not a preaching gift. When in all actuality, it is a God type of gift. The ability to know how the sanctuary is set up was a gift that God designed himself. And when God created you, he gave you the eye to be able to see and when you design you're not just designing spaces you're designing spaces that God can abide in you're designing spaces that God can habitate in you know why people ask you to design for them because you have that God type of eye you make people feel home is home and that is a gift that only God can give don't minimize it to just being able to know color palettes no baby I got a deeper gift than that I have the ability to design a house in such a way that it feels like God is residing in that house that's a spiritual gift it's not just a regular gift it is a gift so here it is he says I'm gonna bring frankincense because frankincense speaks to the ministry that you will do it speaks to the destiny that you will do you're going to be a prophet you're gonna have the ministry of a prophet and so we're, we're gonna bring you frankincense because frankincense was an intricate part of the prophetic ministry it was what was mixed into the anointing oil and it was mixed to anoint prophets. And, and, and Jesus, you're going to be a prophet. You're not going to be a prophet that tells people that this is what's going to happen next week. If you give, this is what's going to happen next week. That's not the type of prophet you're going to be. You're the prophet that points people to God. I just want to say this parenthetically, that as churches, we have to be very careful that we don't become just moral houses of motivation. Right? Because what's happening is, is that we're, we're not, we're teaching people how to get the bag, but we're not teaching them about the morality of managing the things that God has given you. And so you'll have a lot of good people who are not Christians, who are morally, who are moral, which we get moralism. They are moral, but they're not Christians. They are, they are, they are moral, and they are moral, and they will tell you, I, "I'm praying to the universe." No, that, that, you can't, you can't pray to the universe. How, how are you, how are you praying to something that's created? 
the universe is not a creator, it's a creation. If I'm going to take my time to pray to something, I'm going to pray to something that has the power to create. And, and we gotta, we got to be careful. The, the first week, I'm, I think I'm teaching the first week of January, this message called Go to Hell. It's going to be helpful. <laughs> You've been wanting to tell people all the time, go to hell. I just want to tell you, go to hell. Amen. Praise God. This t-shirt's wearing, go to hell. But, but the actuality is, is that the prophetic ministry tells you that there is a danger for those who do not follow God. And it is a danger because it leads people outside of the presence and the will of God. And it's important that we hear that because if you really think about it, over the last five years, how many times have you heard about heaven and hell? Right? And if you're not careful, you'll be so committed to pursuing your desires that you'll miss out on your eternal destination. He, he had the work of the prophet. And, and let me kind of do some work here because it's important, Nate. I think that the, the work of the prophet is significant because Mary didn't know that her son was going to be a sacrifice. Come on, y'all. This is the kind of deep thing that God would let you birth the dream that will become your sacrifice. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's because it's I know we, we like to glamorize destiny and make destiny look beautiful and make destiny look amazing. But, but this story is highlighting to us that destiny will lead to death. Because can I, can I tell you what, what the prophet may not tell you because they may be afraid you may not give or they may be afraid that it may not get them likes. But whatever God has called you to get to do will eventually cause you to die to a level of your own self. Even when you get married, God says, I'm going to give you a ministry of death because you ought to love her like I love the church. So the only way that this covenant is going to survive is if you're both willing to die. Not physically die, but, but die to your flesh, die to your emotion. And God simply says, and if you want to go to the destiny that you want to go to, you're going to have to learn how to die. Because without death, without death, ooh, without death, without death, there is no ability. Now, here's how God set up the temple. Whenever you would go into the temple of God and you would walk into the house of God, there was an altar that was outside of the entrance. And in that altar, there was a brazen altar. And in that brazen altar, before or you can even walk into the church. Now, you got your fine fit on. You got your global, not local shirt on. Or global, not local. You got your global, not local shirt on. And then you walk in. Before you walk into the temple and you got your high heels on, you got your boots because you've been waiting all year to wear it. You got your fur coat on because it's 45 degrees and you've been waiting all year for this moment and you got your high boots on because them boots you bought just for two hundred dollars and you you want to give you want to wear these boots and it's got to be the right temperature and the weatherman tells you that it's going to be it's going to be 60 degrees well in florida that's cold enough and so now i'm going to put it on and I'm going to go to Louis Vuitton store and I'm going to buy this fur coat that's going to be $500. Now, you can't wear a $500 coat and give a $10 offering. Okay, so now here's what happens here. You got all this expense. Now, I, got, I can't just go into the church any type of way. I got to make sure I got my Louis bag because it's got to look nice. And then if I'm a fella, I got to make sure I got my Gucci belt so you can see the G on it because we don't wear anything that you don't see the label on. And I got to make sure my hair is did so I got my wig put on right. I got it tight. I got it, I got it to where you can't see no tracks. I took my bonnet off because I knew I was going out in public. But before I walk in to hear a good word from that pastor that's about to leave and go on vacation. I'm go and I know Thursday night I need to be here because it's it's a Christmas celebration. There's an altar that's there that says before you walk into the house of God, you've got to cut something that dies because I cannot let you live until something dies. And a lot of you want to be glorified. A lot of you want to be crowned, but you don't want to be killed. A lot of you want to be elevated, but you don't 
don't want to be killed. There is no such thing as destiny without a crucifixion. There's no such thing without purpose, without a cross. And many of you are saying, oh, God called me to do this. I'm just letting you know it will cost you your life. It may not cost you your life physically. It will cost you your life emotionally. And if it hasn't cost you your life emotionally, maybe it's not the God type of dream because everything God calls you to takes your heart, takes your soul, takes your mind, takes your money, takes people walking out and you say, I should have given up a long time ago. But then you recognize I've been called to this. I've been made for this. I've been created for this. There's nothing else I can do so they can talk about you, roll their eyes about you, write blogs about you, tweet about you, cut your funds. But I'm still going to show up every Monday because I'm assigned to this. I'm called to this. I'm a miracle for this moment. walk into the altar you got to smell something that died because you got to know when you come to God whatever you're asking him it's got to cost you something if you're going to go to God whatever you're believing God for it's going to cost you something I'm believing God will anoint me it's going to cost you something I'm believing God to take me worldwide it's going to cost you something and it may not feel good but it is part of the destiny of God for your life and you might be saying this is too much and you might be saying this is too hard but nobody's going to lay gifts in front of you without you being a sacrifice and you can't thank God for the good seasons and get mad at the seasons of death you can't thank God when you got the money to buy what you want but not be mad when you got to go through the things that cost you your soul that cost you your night's sleep that cost you your night's rest God was saying Mary I know you don't want to carry a child but I'm gonna use you and yes it sounds exciting but you're gonna have to go in hiding for a season because people are going to try to kill you. People are going to try to come after your baby and you got to protect your baby. You didn't even ask for this but I chose you and you don't have to explain it. You don't have to give a reason. You don't have to give a rationale. I just chose you for it. But Mary whatever you do, hide your baby. Don't show your baby too early because some people will kill it because you showed it too early and so some of you got dreams, some of you got wishes, some of you got desires, but the reason why it's dead is because you're showing it too early. Hide that baby until it's mature. Hide that baby until it can walk. Hide that baby until it can talk. Hide that baby from your social statuses. Hide that baby from your tweets. Hide that baby from your Instagram stories and preserve it until it's ready to come forth. Then they gave this baby myrrh. And when you read that, Brother Barabbas, Evangelist Barabbas, you might say to yourself, well, I, I understand why they gave him gold. I understand why they gave him frankincense. Well, why would they give my baby myrrh? You gave my baby gold because he's a king about the best offering because he's a king because you can't give God something that's not your best. You can't have an incredible season of life where God has blessed your business and all of a sudden you give God a tip. So it, it makes sense to give him gold. Frankincense makes sense too because he's got to smell the best so we want to make sure that we give that to him. But, 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 but myrrh? Myrrh. Myrrh. Apostle Joshua, myrrh? I don't know. Myrrh? No. Myrrh. They, they texting their friends. They're like, Mr. Dorian, soon to be Pastor Dorian, Elf Dorian. Why, 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 did the, why did the Magi give us murder? John Dimash, they're asking, like, why? 
Kenny, like, they were like, I know you sing sometimes and God uses your voice and it's beautiful and powerful. I can see God using you with frankincense and gold, but why God gave you myrrh? And then they started researching and they said, yo, myrrh is about embalming bodies. Myrrh is meant for the use of embalming a dead body so it could last. I don't understand what this is about, but this gift points to the fact that you were created to live, but you were also created to die. But when you die, you need to die empty. And they all sat together. And that's not the miracle though, because Joseph and Mary, I told you at the beginning of the story, they were poor. They were poor. There's a difference between poor and poor. There's a difference between poor and poor. Let me tell you a funny story. It's not part of my message. So just in case you hear it on the street, you heard it from me first. So I went to a Verizon store. I was trying to get my mom on phone. And uh, you know they got these promotions where you can they give you a phone for two years and then you get a credit for it each month and then basically at the end it's free. So I go in the store and the guy says, hey man, you know, we got you all set, getting your mom a phone. Then they say, uh, man, I hate to tell you, you can't afford the phone. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, yeah, you don't have enough credit to get this cell phone. I was like, okay, I'm not understanding what you're saying. I got TKC hat and everything, so I got to mind the way I talk. So I was like, I don't understand what you're telling me. He said, no. He said, bro, when you first got your phone from Verizon, you had an unlimited credit history. He said, something changed, and you can't even get this phone on credit. I said, that's poor. I said, I understand being declined a car, even being declined a mortgage, but being declined a cell phone? So I go, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I don't, I don't, this, I'm, I'm trying to convince him that I have good credit. I said, man, I got an 800. He said, yeah, I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. I said, I said no, I'm serious. I got, I got really good credit. I, he said, he said, man, I, I'm not judging you, man. You just, you just can't afford the phone. And then I had to flip my hat backwards because it said TKC. And I didn't want him to say, I can't go to a church where the pastor can't afford to rent a cell phone. I, I can't be a part of that church. So, so I go to realize that, that my mortgage company for one of my rental properties was writing that I hadn't paid them in months. That's why it's important to check your credit. Because I was getting notifications that my credit changed, but I thought it was just going up. There ain't no other way it could go but up. So I called this, I called the mortgage company. I was 38 hot. I said, I'm gonna sue y'all and da 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 blah blah blah. Right. I was like, hold on first, what email do y'all have? Y'all have, have David S. Y'all? Okay, good. Y'all don't have Pastor David. Cool. All right, yeah, I'm gonna sue y'all. So she said, uh, she, she's a sister. Y'all get what that means. She said, I know this ain't professional, but I'd be hot too. Because it shows you've been a month in advance every single month. I don't know why. Let me tell you what you need. You need to talk to a lead. So I talked to a lead. I said, listen, I normally have great credit. Y'all ruined my credit 159 points. You dropped 159 points. You reported it wrong. You said, I didn't pay October, November, but y'all showing y'all have that payment. She said, I'm going to fix it for you. And you ain't got nothing to worry about. But I said, but that don't help the pain that I had to endure of having a man look at me and tell me. I can't wear a cell phone. The emotional trauma that that did to me. Now when I go to the gas station to go get gas, I feel afraid that my car's gonna decline because I ain't got no credit. But the story of this is this. They were poor. But it seems unfair that if I'm poor, why are you gonna give me a child? I'm going to pay for this child if I'm poor. <laughs> they just had to use the gifts they were given. Because Joseph and Mary used the gifts they were given 
Oh, let, me, let me help you too. They wanted to kill baby Jesus in Egypt. If he had blue eyes, he would have been easy to be discovered. Come on, church. It's obvious he didn't have blue eyes because if he had blue eyes, they'd know that he don't belong in Egypt. So what they had to do was they used the frankincense, gold, and myrrh, and they started selling it so that they can use the resources of their gift to protect them until they can get out of that season. And I just want to tell you that maybe you don't have frankincense, myrrh, and gold, but you got a gift that if you use properly will help you get out of a bad season. If you use the gifts that God has given you, they will help you get out of the season you're in. And I'm out of time and I just want to pray. That the miracle was that God was so considerate that not only did he give him gifts that speak to his destiny, his death, but he also gave them a gift that will help them get out of what they're in. And Joseph was able to use these gifts to help get him out. Can, can I give you another piece of the story? I think this is important. Because we realize the life of Jesus is a powerful story, but here's the thing that most people don't talk about that Joseph at the age of 12 was dead. I want you to think about that for a second because a lot of us read the scripture from this, we read what we want to read. So if Jesus' father died at 12, when he's 12 is the age of manhood, Jesus had to deal with seasons where he did not get an applause from his father because he was not present. So you might be watching online and you may be saying, yes, I'm gonna be here on Thursday at six o'clock. But you may be watching and be saying this, I've been dealt a bad hand. So is Jesus. He had to learn how to live life without dad saying, man, I'm proud you did that miracle. But did you hear about your son? He opened up somebody's eyes. Joseph wasn't there to be a part of that. Joseph wasn't a part, Joseph wasn't there when Jesus turned the wine, the water into wine. Can you imagine Mary? She like, God, you gave me a child and now I'm a single mother out here in these streets. So when we read scripture, we like to sanitize the parts that we like. She had to walk around trying to find men that would help her and not take advantage of her. And you, you may not be dying physically, but you may have to die because the people you love won't be able to cheer you on in this season. That's the scripture. Jesus and you might be a mother watching and you might be saying man I lost my son this holiday so did Mary and, and I need you to read the scripture right because that's why it's important to be educated when you read scripture because the reason why Jesus was dead was because they gave him a false charge y'all ain't talking to me today <laughs> The, the reason why he was crucified was because they charged him falsely. They said he was king of the Jews. That's what the charge was that he was killed for. He was killed prematurely because he didn't have equal representation. And though his representation and his destiny was to go to the cross, he was unjustly tried. 
And when Pilate decided to help out, he said, who do you want me to let go? Do you want me to let go Barnabas or do you want me to let go Jesus? And the crooked jury said, let Barnabas go. And Jesus paid the price. And so even throughout the year when you see many things, the scripture doesn't hide these things for us. We just sanitize it and read the parts of it we love the most. So today I want to pray, but I want to challenge us. This is our big give. We asking many to start at 200. I don't know where you're at. I'm not, listen, if you are one that's like, man, I ain't got it. This is all about money. You ain't got to give it nothing. But to those who have been prospered, Maybe your business has done well. Maybe you have done well, even in a pandemic. Maybe your job has kept you in a pandemic. That's reason to give them. But I'm, I'm asking all of us, from the leader to the people, to the online family, man, what gift of gold can I give to him today? Not about what I got to take care of, but what can I give? And many, I was, I was talking to one of my guys, he's a, he's a promoter, and he's in Atlanta right now, and I saw him blowing money at the club. And I sent him a message, I said, hey, I see you blowing all that money in the club. Cause my members, they know. I see you blowing all that money in the club. Well, number one, you're throwing dollars in the air. You're not throwing real money, you're throwing dollars in the air. But I said, I see you blowing money in the club. How much are you going to give to God this Sunday? He said, man, Pastor, that's, you could have texted me that. I said, no, how much are you going to give God? Because I said, you can't go out and buy bottles, but then be broke when it comes time to give to God. Because you have to challenge people. As a leader, you used to be scared to challenge people about money, but money is an indicator of where your heart is. It's a spiritual discipline to be a giver. And so I, I, I'm not gonna tell you what to give. I'm gonna tell you this, that 200 for many is a starting point. For many, they can give a thousand. Many can give 5,000. I don't know where you fit. I'm never gonna tell you where you fit. I'm just gonna tell you that you cannot give God something that ain't cost you nothing. You can't give God that every Sunday, but there should be a set time where we come together and we honor God with something supernatural. And I'm asking many of you to start at 200. So I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna give and then we're gonna honor God with this being our gift towards Christmas. Father, I don't know what people make and what people do with what they make, but I do know that we all make something. And we have a responsibility to honor God with what we've made. If this has been a great year economically, or if it hasn't, some of us bought houses, some of us lost houses. Some of us bought cars, some of us lost cars. We don't know where people are, but we do know a sacrifice is required and demanded for them that walk into the altar. And so God, help us today do what belongs to you. This is the end of the year. This is the one time that we ask our people of God, our people of faith, to give something sacrificially. It's given around Christmas because we want us to know that Christmas belongs to Christ. And yes, we're going to have celebrations Thursday and honor you on Christmas, but today is about our money. Our money is, is the real root to who we are. We, 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 are, we are driven by it. We are, some of us, controlled by it. But God, you ask us to surrender it. And just as the wise men surrendered frankincense, myrrh, and gold today, we give up our treasure. And we ask you to bless our treasure.